Good morning, America. Today is Friday, August the 24th. It's 11.26, I believe. We've been derailed this morning. We're going to do a reading from Ecclesiastics, Chapter 1. Um, I'm going to give you an introduction into the book of e Ecclesiastics because I, I don't recall reading from it that much this year. Um, the author was Solomon, King Solomon, and it was written between 940 and 935 B.C. before Christ. Uh, time span says unknown, probably during the latter years of Solomon reigns when he was much older. Um, the title comes from the Greek, uh, means preacher. Ecclesiastic means pre preacher. Background, though the author has a life full of pleasures, wealth, power, and prestige, and that's all the things that were given unto King Solomon, he still seeks happiness. The majority of Ecclesiastic is probably written as Solomon analyzes past failures and the apotheosis in his life. Uh, where was it written in Jerusalem? To whom? Primarily to the young people and to those scattered, uh, to those considered pupils of the elders. Uh, we don't have that many today, unfortunately. Contest. The book of Ecclesiastes began with the author sharing his reasons for viewing life as meaningless futile, full of vanity. Uh, his thoughts content that despite man's labor, attain, attainment, popularity, and possessions, death awaits all. And this is true. You can go to the doctor and stretch your skin so you can look younger and do all kinds of foolishness to yourself to make yourself look like a porcelain doll, but ultimately death will be waiting for you in the end. Okay, and it doesn't matter whether you're great or small, rich or poor, death will become thee. Okay, so all your possessions and all your popularity will be like a dream, forgotten. Uh, unfortunately, you're in a world where maybe it may not be forgotten so quickly. We still have people going to Elvis Presley gravesite every birthday. Idolatry, it is called. Okay, so it says, Death awaits all. He realizes that there is a time and a season for all things, but does not know how man can fully understand when these times are relevant. This confession of persistent pessimism eventually gives way to the truth that there is no joy for man apart from his creator. Absolutely not. If you don't know your creator, when you are down, you are more likely to be destructive. If you know your Creator, when you are down, you are more likely to drop to your knees and ask for grace and mercy and strength. And tell your Creator all about your problems. But without a Creator, you do the unthinkable. What is the unthinkable? Self-destruction. That's the unthinkable. Okay? So, outside, apart from your Creator, there is no joy for man. The author realizes and enthusiastically proclaims the answer, satisfactory, sa satisfaction, meaning, and happiness does not come from attachment, attainment of life. It doesn't come from how much you have in your bank account. It doesn't come from how great your possessions are. It doesn't come from how great your popularity is. None of that gives you happiness. None of it uh, gives you eternal life either. So it is futile, like the king said. But from the word, from the, but from the Lord of life, and that is Jesus Christ. Key words in the book of Ecclesiastes are vanity, ambition, without God. There is no sense to be made out of our lives. There is no sense. Nothing makes sense without God. All is vanity, emptiness, and hope hopelessness. Our earthly ambitions will continuously frustrate and disappoint us if we seek them as an end to themselves. So if you go around seeking everything but God, 
You may be able to obtain it, but you won't keep it for a while, and it won't make you happy, nor will it give you joy. Okay? Theme. What a, part, what a theme. We've done this. This is more than 400 tapes I've done so far. We all should know now that themes are PowerPoints. What are PowerPoints? These are facts that don't need to be proven. It's a fact that I am a caramel colored woman. It doesn't need to be proven. You're looking right at me. It's a fact that I have thick lips. You're looking right at them. I wear glasses. Another fact. Okay? So that's the same thing for themes. Themes are facts that don't need to be proven. If you need more, the sun comes out in the day and the moon at night. That's another fact. Don't need to be proven. They're both round, but they both uh, occupy a different time of the day. The moon is at night and the sun comes in the daytime. All right? So let me give you some facts from the book of Ecclesiastic before we start. The first fact, earthly goals apart from God will not bring us happiness. Did you hear that? Earthly goals apart from God will not give us happiness. And let me tell you something else. It is better to be poor as such and be happy than to have millions in your bank and be unhappy and miserable. Okay? It is better to be poor with a small morsel to eat and be happy then be at a banquet where there's much to eat and chaos all around the table. It's just, it's just it doesn't make sense. You can't enjoy your food. Okay? So, earthly goals apart from God will not bring us happiness. Point one. Fact two. Money will not bring us happiness. And today, many of the servants of God are loaded with money. Loaded. Does it bring them happiness? Absolutely not. Do they use any of that money to help the poor? Absolutely not. They help themselves. Alright? That's why we know that they are not the servants of God. They are the servants of man. Which you love so much. Okay? Power will not bring us happiness. Accomplishments will not bring us happiness. Did you hear that? Money won't do it. Fame will not bring us happiness. Did you hear that? Let me start all over. Earthly goals apart from God will not bring us happiness. Money will not bring us happiness. Fame will not bring us happiness. Power will not bring us happiness. Accomplishments will not bring us happiness. Human wisdom will not bring us happiness. Godly wisdom will. And there's a, there's a difference between godly wisdom and human wisdom. I give you a perfect example. Godly wisdom says that we ought to respect everyone, regardless of who it is. Human wisdom says that you must give respect in order to get respect. That is human earthly wisdom. It's worthless. Worthless. Just as worthless as a candy wrapper with no candy in it. All right? A life that is totally submissive and devoted to God will bring happiness. All right, so I can tell you what won't bring you happiness, but I can tell you what will bring you happiness, okay? A life that is totally submissive and devoted to God will bring happiness. If it's not totally devoted to God, it will not bring you happiness. So if you're in a relationship with someone and that person proclaims to know God but treats you ill, that will not bring you happiness. If that person knows God and treats you just as good as God does, that will bring you happiness. Okay, a youthful life obedient to God will bring joy to our later years. Absolutely. A youthful life obedient to God will bring us joy to our later years. A youthful life disobedient to God will bring us sorrow to our later years. So there are many people who have taken the second route and they're in prison today serving a life sentence. Yeah. And nobody in a jail cell is happy to be there. No one. No one. All right. Next, we ought to enjoy life even though at times we will have trouble. Of course, just because you are among the people of God doesn't mean that trouble won't come your way. It doesn't mean that sickness won't come your way. It doesn't mean that disaster won't come your way. But it does mean that you will handle it differently. 
You will take a different approach to it. Okay? You will handle it better. You will not become self-destructive. Okay? Uh, you will be among those that try to save people. Not among those that are going around stealing electronics when there's nowhere for miles to hook it up to. There's no electricity. Okay? The closer we walk with God, the more aware we become of His blessings in our life. Absolutely. Everything is a blessing. When you wake up in the morning, that's a blessing. That's another day given to you unto God. Man has not given that to you. All right? Today could be our last on this earth. We shall view it as a precious gift from God. Absolutely, because you never know which day is your last. So every day you are to look at it as precious. And if you live like that, the Lord may bless you with many days and give you golden years. Okay, we're going to be doing Ecclesiastic 1 and... Uh, we already know the writer, Solomon. This particular reading has only two colors in it. Silver for history. And the the, the uh, act, there are actually only two verses here that are silver. Verse 1 and verse 12. The remaining is pink for witnessing. Okay, we will be reading it from both the Rainbow Bible, which gives us our rainbow colors, and the... E parallel Bible, which gives it to us in plain language. Verse 1 says, The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Israel. Verse 1 says, The words of the teacher, son of David, king of Israel. Verse 2 to 11 is painful witness, so I will just read it straight away. And then we will transfer over to the parallel Bible. Verse 2, vanity of vanities, said the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Vanity of vanity, said the preacher, vanity of vanity, all is vanity. Let me read that from here. Meaningless, meaningless, that's what vanity means. Meaningless, meaningless, said the teacher. Ultimately, meaningless, everything is meaningless. Okay, verse 3, what profit has a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? What profit has a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? Verse 2. Verse, verse 3, I'm sorry. What does man gain from all his labor at which he tolls under the sun? What does man gain from all his labor at which he tolls under the sun? 3. 4. One generation passes away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Amen. One generation passes away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Four. Generations come, and generations go, but the earth remains forever. Five. The sun also rises, and the sun goeth down, and hastens to his place where he arises. The sun also rises, and the sun goes down, and hastens to his place where he arose. Five. The sun rises, and the sun sets. And hurries back to where it rises. The sun rises and the sun sets. And hurries back to where it rises. 6. The wind goes towards the south and turns about unto the north. It swirls about continuously and the wind returns again according to his circuit. Let me read that again. The wind goes towards the south and turns about unto the north. It swirls about continuously and the wind Return us again according to his circuit. It's reading from here. The wind blows to the south and turns to the north. Round and round it goes, even returning on its circuit. So it goes the same direction. Okay, seven. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place where winch the rivers come, thither they return again. All the rivers run to the sea, yet the sea is not full. Okay, now, unto the place from which the rivers come, teacher, they return again. Seven, all the streams flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full. To the place the streams come from, there they return again. 
So every river that runs into the sea, the water returns back into that river. So eight. All things are full of labor. Men cannot utter it. But the eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. 8. All the things are worse, are wearsome, more than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ears is full of hearing. <coughs> That's like a person who likes to hear gossip. Can never hear enough gossip. Excuse me. All right, eight. We'll repeat it again. All things are full of labor. Men cannot utter it. it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. Nine. The thing that has been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. All right. Ten. Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new. It has been already of old time, which was before us. Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new. It has been already of old time, which was before us. Ten. Is there anything of which one can say, Look, this is something new. It was here already long ago. It was here before our time. That's why I get upset when we celebrate Christopher Columbus Day. Because he did not find anything new. He did not find new land. What he found was occupied land by God's people, Indians. That's what he found. He didn't find new land. Misconception. Still being taught in schools today. Twelve is that second silver verse for history. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. Twelve. Wisdom is meaningless. I, the teacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. Thirteen. And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that were done under heaven. This sore trivial has God given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sore trivial has God given to the sons of men to be exercised therewith. 13. I devoted myself to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under heaven. What a heavy burden God has laid on men. There's no exclamation mark there. I don't know why it is. 14. I have seen all things. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun. And behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. 15. That which is corrupt cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. That which is corrupt cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. And this is true. If you have an individual in jail, and he has done a monstrosity, just because he's been in jail does not mean that he is ready to come out of into the world. He, he is still corrupt. Okay, he is still that same person. The only thing is he's older. And probably regretful that he got caught or she got caught. But they don't change. The corrupt does not change. Okay, the only time the corrupt changes is when God puts his hands on them. Like Paul. Paul was corrupt. <laughs> and when he met the Lord in Damascus, he became straight. But that's the only way. Okay. 
16. I commute with my own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate and have give, gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart has great experience of wisdom and knowledge. And this was true about King Solomon. 17. And I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceived that this is also is vexation of spirit. And I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceived that this is also is vexation of spirit. 18. The last one. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. So let's take it from here. Excuse me. <clears throat> 14. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless. A chasing after the wind. 15. What is twisted cannot be straightened. What is lacking cannot be counted. 16. I thought to myself, look, I have grown and increased in wisdom more than anyone who has ruled over Jerusalem before me. I have experienced much of wisdom and experience and knowledge. I will read that again. 16. I thought of myself, look, I have grown and increased in wisdom more than anyone who has ruled over Jerusalem before me. I have experienced much of wisdom and knowledge. 17. Then I applied myself to the understanding of wisdom and also of madness and folly. But I've learned that this too is chasing after the wind. Last one. Skip a page here. Okay, here it is. Seven, eighteen. I will read it from here one more time. But in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. Eighteen. For with much wisdom comes much sorrow, and more knowledge, the more grief. For with much wisdom comes much sorrow, the more knowledge, the more grief. And this is true. The more money you have, the more troubles, the bigger your tax bracket. It's just common sense, America. So, why work hard to be rich when you can be comfortable and happy? Thank you very much for listening to us here at Spiritual Water. My name is Brenda Guerrero. And as always, may the peace of God be upon you. May the protection of God preserve thee. May the will of God for your life come from thee. Until the next time, please enjoy this wonderful Friday and thank you very much for listening.